Welcome my friends again to this space reading and praying the Holy Gospel. Today we're gonna read Luke chapter 4, 24, 30. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lords. Today, Jesus tells us in the Gospel that no prophet is accepted in his own native place. But making use of this proverb, Jesus is introducing himself as a prophet. A prophet is someone who speaks on behalf of another. He who carries someone else's message. Among the Hebrews, the prophets were men sent by God to announce, whether with words or signs, the presence of God, the coming of the Messiah, and the message of salvation, peace, and hope. Jesus is the prophet par excellence, the long-awaited Savior. In him, all prophecies are fulfilled. But just as it did happen at the time of Elijah and Elisha, Jesus is not well accepted among their own, for those who are filled with anger rose up, draw him out of the town. Because of our baptism, each one of us is also called to be a prophet. Therefore, first, we should announce the good news. To do so, as Pope Francis said, we have to listen to the word with a sincere approach, to let it touch our own lives, to let it retrieve us, exhort us, mobilize us, because if we do not dedicate time to pray with that word, then we shall indeed be a false prophet, a swindler, or an empty charlatan. Second, to live by the gospel. Again, Pope Francis says, we are not asked to be flawless, but to keep growing and, want, and wanting to grow as we advance along the path of the gospel. Our arms must never grow slack. It is essential to be sure that God loves us, that Jesus Christ has saved us, and that his love is forever. Third, as disciples of Jesus, we must be aware that just as Jesus experienced rejection, anger, and being drove out, this will also be present on the horizon of our daily lives. Let Mary, Queen of the Prophets, guide us on our way. She will guide us. And remember to live in love, because love gives value to things. Mm -hmm.